Maybe tomorrow we'll all wear 42. Jackie Robinson is one of the most recognizable players in the history of American sports. And not only that, Robinson is also one of the best players of his era. This is his story. Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born on January 31, 1919 in Georgia. After Jackie's father left the family in 1920, they soon moved to Pasadena, California. Right before Jackson rolled into high school, the athletic ability in the family started to show, as Jackie's older brother Mac won a silver medal at the 1936 Summer Olympics. Mac, along with Jackie's older brother Frank, encouraged Jackie to pursue sports. And pursue sports Jackie did, as in high school and in junior college, Jackie thrived in sports like baseball, football, tennis, and especially track. Towards the end of Jackie's athletic career in junior college, his brother Frank was killed in a motorcycle accident. Frank was one of the brothers that inspired Jackie to do sports, and the brother Jackie felt closest to. His brother's death motivated Jackie to pursue sports at the University of California at Los Angeles. Jackie became one of the best athletes in the history of UCLA. He became the first athlete at UCLA ever to earn a varsity letter in four sports, which were baseball, football, basketball, and his best sport, track. In track and field, Jackie won the 1940 NCAA championship for long jump, but baseball was seen as Robinson's worst sport. Jackie hit 097 in his only season playing baseball, but in his first game he went 4 for 4 and stole home. Twice. Right before graduation, Jackie took a job as an assistant athletic director for the National Youth Administration. Shortly after Robinson took the job, the government cut funding for the administration. This made Jackie want to pursue athletics again as he became the running back for the Los Angeles Bulldogs. However, shortly after, Robinson was drafted. At around this time, Japanese released their attack on Pearl Harbor, which caused the United States to enter World War II. Robinson's military career was short-lived following an incident with an officer's wife on a bus. Although there was no segregation rule on the bus, Robinson was sent to the back of the bus and he refused. Robinson received an honorable discharge, although he was unfairly charged with a quote, crime he committed on the bus. In 1945, Robinson received a letter from the Kansas City Monarchs to play professional baseball in the Negro Leagues. Robinson played very well for the Monarchs, however, he hated the experience. The Negro Leagues disorganization and their excessive gambling made Robinson very frustrated. During that season with the Monarchs, there was an interest from Major League Ball Clubs. The Boston Red Sox had a tryout for Robinson and other African American players. But the tryout was not held to sign any of these players. The tryout was held to show Boston City Councilmen that these players didn't belong in Major League Baseball. The Red Sox were eventually the last team to have an integrated roster. Thankfully, general managers like Branch Rickey were serious. Robinson was selected as one of the players to be interviewed for the possibility of a job. Rickey needed to make sure that whoever he chose could stand the racial abuse that would be directed at him. Robinson was surprised, saying, quote, Are you looking for a Negro who is afraid to fight back? Ricky replied, saying that he needed a Negro player with the guts not to fight back. And on November 1st, 1945, Robinson signed a contract to play for the Dodgers minor league team, the Montreal Royals. Robinson only spent one season in the minors. Although he had a tough start, Robinson finished the season winning the Leeds MVP award, hitting 349. The following year, just a few days before the season started, Robinson was called up to the Major Leagues, and on April 15, 1947 at Ebbets Field, Jackie made his Major League debut. Even though he didn't get a hit, Robinson walked and scored a run. Jackie became the first player in the 20th century to break baseball's color barrier. Although Robinson did have a very good year, this season was not a cakewalk. Robinson was constantly booed, had racial slurs yelled at him, and was intentionally pegged by other pitchers. But there were other players and some of Robinson's teammates that made him feel welcome. Jackie's teammate Pee Wee Reese said, quote, You can hate a man for many reasons. Color is not one of them. For the next eight years, Robinson took the major leagues by storm and racial tension in the major leagues started to ease. As Jackie started to settle in, his true abilities started to show. Robinson had a total of six All-Star appearances, won the National League MVP in 1949, had multiple National League pennants with the Dodgers, and won a World Series championship against the New York Yankees in 1955. Robinson was more than just an All-Star baseball player. 
Jackie's desegregation of the major leagues was a major step in the civil rights movement in the United States. He allowed Negro League players like Satchel Paige, Ernie Banks, and Willie Mays to make their rightful spot in the major leagues to showcase their talents. Remember the beginning of this video? Maybe tomorrow we'll all wear 42. Well, Reese was right. One day we do wear 42, and that day is today, April 15th, the day of Jackie Robinson's debut. Every player in Major League Baseball will wear the number 42 today and every day on April 15th to honor Jackie and his contributions to the game. Because of Jackie, no longer will there be white players or black players, just players and an amazing game. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch another video like this one, be sure to check out my Satchel Page video that I released last week. The link will be in the description and it will be an end card at the end of the video. But thank you guys and I will see you all very soon.